decision regarding the fight at the Crosstown shootout. The Hamilton County prosecutor says he's staying out of it. Dennis Jansen leads our live team coverage. Denny? Carol and Clyde, there will be no legal hangover from Saturday's Crosstown Donnybrook, as it should be, in my opinion. Though authorities operate without the luxury of such subjectivity, they've nevertheless reached the same conclusion. Our Tom McKee has more live from Cintas Center. Tom? Well, DJ, of course, Hamilton County Prosecutor Joe Dieters said both universities can handle this situation much better than the criminal justice system, so no criminal charges will be filed. Four players from each school have been suspended so far, anywhere from one to six games. Now, going forward, of course, it's a matter of if, when, where, and how future shootouts will be staged. This is what the nation saw Saturday from Xavier University and the University of Cincinnati. Now both schools are working to repair the damage. And it's raising questions about whether the annual rivalry should be shelved or moved to a neutral site like U.S. Bank Arena. Student body presidents from both schools say they hope it can continue. Personally, I would, I would like it to continue, but I want it to be a safe environment too. Something that we can all celebrate together. I'd love to see the game continue. I think it's a great part of, uh, of our tradition. I think for, um, for being a Xavier student the last four years has been a great part of my experience. UC coach Mick Cronin says it's up to the university and athletic officials whether to continue the contest, but... I think I was pretty clear on what, how I feel about the game. If it can't be played the right way, it doesn't need to be played, whether it's next year. Or forever. How to do that the right way is being discussed in all corners of the community. Xavier coach Chris Mack says that means changes are in order all around. You know, I think taking steps when the crosstown rivalry, you know, hopefully continues and, and comes around um, to be able to be wiser the next time around by how we handle ourselves in the media, how we handle ourselves in the, um, during the national anthem, um, just you know, the lead up to the game and, and how we conduct ourselves during the game. Student leaders are denouncing the brawl, reminding everyone that education comes first, and they're working on changes from the student perspective. There are a lot of considerations you can take into play, whether it's location or having the, the athletes not trash talk before games, simple stuff like that might go a long way. How do our student sections need to change? How does um, kind of the atmosphere around the game need to change? Uh, so those are conversations we're working toward right now, trying to figure out even when we come back in January and February, um, you know, what sort of community service activities do we do? What ways do we do to kind of make this right for the Cincinnati community? Now, of course, UC is talking about having its players undergo anger management. They're also having them talk to possibly talk to high school kids. And there's also going to be an apology to the students when they come back on campus in January. And DJ Xavier is talking about joint community service projects to make this, as everybody has been saying, to make this right. Thank you very much, Tom McKee, joining us live from Cintas Center. UC will be the first to face an opponent in an undermanned state. They'll be down, of course, four players for their visit to Wright State tonight. More on that coming up at 620. Carol, Clyde.